Alright guys, moving right along, we're getting into our assembly file now. So I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to create an assembly file. A couple things are different when you open an assembly file. You've got an assembly tab with specific tools that have to do with building assemblies. Fun stuff like exploded view and insert components and bill of materials, things that we might not get into in our class, but good to know they're there at least. First thing you also see is that you've got this part assembly to insert. So what you want to do now is you want to insert some of the various parts that we created in our last tutorial. So I'm going to go browse and you can see that I've got the three right here, main, bottom, and main top. They all look a little different in their preview, so I'll just select them all. And when you first go to plop them into your assembly, they're going to show up stuck to your mouse one at a time. You click once to drop them. There we go. Three clicks, three parts, drop three. So there it is. Now we've got some stuff to talk about. So this one in the middle is our master file. Because of that little black checkbox that we added to our split feature, whatever changes we make to this master file will now be updated into each of the individual corresponding files. There's a couple of different ways to edit this file. One way is to click on the actual item itself in the display area with a right click and go to open part. And as you'll see, once you do that, it opens up that file in its own original part file. You can close that. The other way is to go over here to the design tree where you can see the part is in this design tree and you can do a right click on that and you can go open part and it opens it in its own part file. The other way to make adjustments to this file is to just expand the part inside of the design tree and you'll see all of the features and sketches and everything that you use to create this file are all right there nested within the part inside of the design tree. So that's a big deal. That means we can create and edit parts inside of an assembly. All good news. So for instance, if we wanted to look at that shell feature, the one I was talking about just a second ago, we'll just unfold the part, scroll down to the shell feature, we'll go edit feature, and a couple of things are going to come up. The assembly must be saved to perform this command. Do you want to save the assembly? Yes, I do. Save. Hit enter. There we go. Now, here is our shell feature. It's not the one we wanted to look at. We wanted to look at split, wasn't it? Anyway still in a good example. Here's our shell. Right now we're in inches, right? Let's exit out of this shell. Let's change our inches to millimeters. Down here in the lower right hand corner is this IPS button. That stands for inches, pounds, seconds. Click on that, change it to millimeters. Go back to the shell, edit the shell, and you can see that we have a five millimeter wall thickness on this part. Good to know. Next thing we want to do get back in here. You can see everything turns blue right now. Now when something in your design tree of an assembly turns blue, that means you're editing a component. So what was it that we wanted to look at? The split. Do a right click on the split, go to edit feature. Now here's the thing. These two little black check boxes. These were the key to creating a relationship between this master file and these two corresponding part files. Make sure that those two things are checked. Otherwise, you'll just be spitting out parts from your master and they won't have any uh, corresponding relationship between back and forth. So we'll hit that and there we go. Now, when we look over here, still everything is blue. That means we're editing a part inside of an assembly. In order to exit out of that, we go up here to where normally we have an exit sketch button. This time we have an edit exit component button. So we'll exit out of the component everything turns black again and we can close that expansion up and now we're back in good standing. Now something's happened. We've got a couple of extra little icons that have shown up suddenly and let's just take a look at that. This little thing right here that looks like a stoplight with a red light and a green light, that is the rebuild icon. Probably because we've been opening and closing and changing this master file. SolidWorks wants to rebuild our part the parts built off of the master. So the way to do that is just select the part that needs to be rebuilt. If you see this little icon and go up here to the top to where there's a rebuild button. There's also a hot key for it which is control B. Hit that, it'll rebuild. 
I'm not sure if that made any exact changes, but because we were opening and closing this part all over the place, SolidWorks wanted to just confirm. Anyway, uh, let's do a couple drastic changes to this master file and confirm that it updates our two part files. Maybe one would be if we were to edit the line that creates the split. If we want, since we can see it right there, we can do a right click on that line. We can go edit sketch. We can go control eight for normal two. And then we can just drag this puppy to our heart's content all we want. Let's make it something insane like that. Whoa. Um, <laughs> then we can exit the sketch and it will update our parts accordingly. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to undo that because that's tremendously ugly. Boom, just like that. Okay. So hopefully you're catching on. It's a good thing to have a master file because you only have to change one thing instead of change two things. All right, oops. Moving on to our next point, which I just gave you an example of. First, we have to exit out of this component. So let's always keep keep your eyes flashing up here to the upper right, and if you see this little button right here, it means you're inside of a component. Component. The other way is uh, if it's blue over here in your design tree, you know you're inside of that component. Exit out of that, it goes away. Okay, cool. Looks like because we're editing this thing, it's going to want to rebuild. You can just hit the rebuild button, and it just gets them to both go away. So when you're inside of assemblies and you're editing a master part and updating parts that are built off of it. You're going to constantly having to be hit this rebuild button up here. So keep an eye out for that. <clears throat> okay, so now that we know all that, we can get this thing to go away. We'll just go over here to the design tree and do a right click on it and we'll go hide component. It's going to fly away. It's not gone altogether, it's still there. It's still in our design tree. And at any point, we can do a right click and get it to show again and it'll come back to us. But for now, it's just invisible. So there we go. All right, now. Another thing to notice too is this little F up here inside of the uh, master files uh, component. That F means fixed. And what that means is that it's fixed in place. These two parts have a dash. See that dash right there? That means that these two things are floating so they can move all around in 3D space. So that's great. It's great to finally be able to move things around all that you want. This is what everybody's been hoping for in, th in SolidWorks. So far we've been moving stuff around with um, you know, sketch relationships and uh, smart dimensions. And so now finally, once we start creating parts inside of an assembly, we can move stuff around at will any direction we want. But now we're faced with the challenge that we want to be able to move things precisely again. Like say for instance, we wanted to line this up with this thing. Well, we could just kind of eye it like that. Let's see, there we go, is that right? Well, then if we spin around, no, it's not right at all, see? So the way to do that is to create mates. You're creating relationships. You're going to create a mate between one surface and another surface. Okay. So let me pull these things apart. Another good best practice is to fix one of these pieces in space. So you're going to want to fix at least one thing in space so that you have something to build off of. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go here to our bottom one, do a right click, go down, go to fix. Now, when I try to grab this thing and move it, it won't move. This one still will move all around. Okay, so let's just spin around and take a look at that. All right, good news. So, what we're going to do is create a mate between this face and this face. And so we'll select the first face, hit the mate button, and we'll select the second face. And it's going to put those right in line with each other. Very good. Green checkbox to confirm. Now I'm going to create a mate between this face and this face and it's going to create a nice alignment between those two parts. Fantastic. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to click on one of these edges. I'm going to zoom in on this top part. And don't forget the mate thing is on all the time now. Or it stays on until I turn it off. I'll create a mate between those two edges. There we go. Green checkbox. Okay, and so there we go. Now we've lined up those two pieces exactly, something we couldn't have done by eye. I, mathematically, these two things are aligned, totally coincident, so they are on the exact same plane. These things are lined up 
perfectly. Okay. All right. So we're happy about that. Now in class, we created a situation where you could move one of these and it would rotate on the other one. Unfortunately, some of the mates are holding our part in place. Now we use those first mates for alignment. So let's just green checkbox to get out of the mate tool. And let's just delete a couple of mates that are holding us back from showing movement. So first one is probably going to be, we like this mate here. It's this mate here that holds those two edges together. So we like that one. And we definitely want to keep these two edges mated together because we want this thing to stay aligned as it's able to move. But it's this mate here, excuse me, this one right there. As you hover over them, they'll show themselves that I think is uh, causing us some issues. So I'm just going to right click on that and I'm going to delete that mate. And now we have the option to move this thing. So see the mate between these two surfaces is holding this top and bottom pieces in line with each other. And then the mate that's here is holding these two edges coincident with each other. So we need those two both, but we don't need that third one. And that's a tricky thing that can show up sometimes where you're going to have to use mates to align parts together, but then you're going to have to delete them again to get the movement that you want. Okay. So voila, we like it. All right, now that we've got that, let's take a look at something else. Close this up. Say we open this like this and we wanna, um, we wanna link it so that it lands perfectly closed. We may think like that's it. Let's see if I can do it. See, you think that's it, but then as you zoom in here on the microscopic level, you see that no, that is not it. So the way to close this thing up is to go here to this edge here. Create a mate between this edge and it will snap it closed to absolute perfection. Close that. And that is just an example of how we use mates to align things together. Now that I've closed it back up to where I know, not, where I know it's good, I can get rid of that mate. Delete. Okay. Now I can move it and I can hit undo and it'll go back to where it started. Okay. Now, master file. Let's get into that. Here's our master file. Right now it's hidden. Let's show it again. Or in fact, let's not even show it. Let's leave it hidden and we'll just edit it in its own file. So we'll go here to the master file in the tree and we'll do a right click and we'll go to open part. Okay. Here's our thing. Very good. Let us um, go ahead and just change some of these fillets to give us an example of see if this thing's working. Here's the fillets, right? There we are. Do a right click on the fillet and go edit feature. Right now it is at 12.7 millimeters, nice big fillet. Let's just change it down to three millimeters. Little skinny fillet, there we go. That seems nice, there we go. Happy about that. We'll just check out of that. We're gonna save changes and we're going to rebuild with our new changes. So there we go. Now we're back in our assembly suddenly and it changed so fast I hardly even noticed. But look at that. All of our parts are now updated. Our, our mates are still holding the parts in, in the position that they were before and our fillets are updated all from this change from, uh, from this master file. Okay? And it all goes back to those two little black box uh, boxes that we ex put a check into. That's the key to creating that relationship, okay? So there we go. So now pay attention to one thing. If you've got a coincident relationship in between the edge of this top piece or from this top line to this top line, you wouldn't want to put a fillet on that line because that would cause your, your mate to fail. Changing this would fail. So watch out for adding features to um, edges or faces that contain mates because it can cause your stuff to fail. Maybe we'll get into that in the next one. But for now, give that a shot and keep plugging away if you run into a bunch of problems like I have. Hopefully this helps. And don't forget to email me if you have any questions along the way. All right. Thanks a lot.